Good day and welcome back to the Hopkins Demonstration Forest in part 13 of what is a forest. We're going to go over how to measure the diameter and height of a tree. So using a couple of those tools from video 12 that I showed you, uh, a tape measure, uh, in this case a logger's tape, uh, sometimes referred to as a diameter's tape, but a, a flexible measuring tape um, comes in handy, uh, as well as that device to measure a vertical angle uh, protractor. I kind of refer to it as an automatic one, uh, but a clinometer, not for measuring a uh, horizontal angle like a compass, but measuring a vertical angle, and this gives us both uh, the degrees, like a protractor would, as well as that ratio of percent slope of an angle. So we'll get to the uh, height in a little bit, but let's start real quick and just go over diameter. So in order to measure the diameter, what we have to do is, since we can't get into the tree, is we start and measure the thing we can, uh, which most trees that we're going to be looking at uh, are round. Uh, or have an oval shape to them. And we're not going to be able to measure the diameter directly, but we're going to be able to measure around the tree or measure that circumference. So that's why having some type of flexible measuring tape is important. And then once we get uh, that area that we're going to measure the diameter circumference, a lot of people ask, well, how do you pick it? So we have a standardized height off the ground. We use something, uh, a term called DBH, diameter at breast height. And the average height of that is about four and a half feet. So four and a half feet off the ground on the high side or the uphill side of the tree from the base of the soil, four and a half feet up, that's where I take my measurement. So I'm gonna be measuring the circumference uh, on these tape measures. Most tape measures, you go to the end when measuring length. And so I have here, uh, I'll just read it. It's gonna show you, it's about 3.7. So another thing in forestry, it's not required, but uh, we tend to use tapes that aren't in inches uh, because inches get a little difficult to keep track of. Uh, we keep everything in feet. So this tape is actually in feet. And I measured that, I think, what was it? 3.7. Uh, on the tape feet. So that's circumference. So how do you get circumference to diameter? Well, it's a very simple calculation. Uh, diameter equals the circumference divided by pi, 3.14. So we take that 3.7 feet divided by 3.14. Okay, and that gives us our feet. Uh, the diameter, of course, then we want to take that uh, and figure out how many inches are in there but um, that's just typically how we report it. So uh, a lot of times our lengths are in feet, our diameters are in inches. So um, 3.14 requires a calculator. So we're a little smarter than that. Uh, we don't like to carry calculators around all day. So what we have on this tape, um, and you might've seen this before on some tapes, is there's a special scale on the back. And sometimes you can even, there's a little uh, text on there, but you look at that, it's, it doesn't look quite like metric. Uh, and if you could read that, I'm not sure if it's oriented the right way. Um, it says uh, on there, diameter equivalent of circumference. Because those aren't inches, they aren't some weird metric system. Those are 3.14 inch marks on the tree. So I wrap that tape around the tree at four and a half feet off the ground with the circumference side out, making sure my tape's nice and level. Uh, and now in this case, the zero is at, it's not at the end of the tape. It is a little bit away, so you can pull it nice and tight, making sure it's all, um, the slack's taken out so you can get an accurate measurement. Because on this diameter, you can get pretty close. It actually has uh, inches, tenths of inches, and you can estimate between that. So I can get down to the nearest uh, five hundredth of an inch. And so if I count from here, I have 13, there's 14 and 15, just a little over 14.1 inches. So when that tape lined up on the other side, let me see if I can find it. It was the zero, again, not being at the uh, end of the tape, it's a few inches in, um, lined up about like so. And measuring that, it was uh, 15 is down a ways. So that was uh, a little over 14. We record that as 14.1 inches. 
So again, very easy, very simple. If you don't happen to have a diameter tape, you could make one by taking a string and just measuring off 3.14 increments, maybe putting in the half inch, uh, doing some estimation between, or just take and measure around the tree with a string and take a rigid length um, ruler and measure out the length of your string, divide by pi. So diameter is a very useful number for us. It uh, gives us a lot of information based on different tree species. The size of the diameter uh, really gives us an idea of how much that tree in the way of resources it needs. Uh, water, sunlight, growing space. Um, there's lots of tables out there that, that help us um, use diameter as a, as a very simple quick measurement that gives us a lot of information. It's also a good measurement to uh, take to uh, view the uh, progress and growth of a tree. So we have diameter. Now the next piece is height because uh, we want to know the height of a tree for a, a number of reasons, but ultimately knowing the height of a tree uh, allows us to take that diameter along with the height and uh, calculate how much volume the tree is. So just one measurement on the bottom, the diameter might give us the surface area of that cross section or stump area. Um, height is the second component to determining volume. And ultimately what we're getting at there is, is usually the volume of wood and the value of a tree. Uh, there's some other uh, reasons we'd measure heights, but uh, by and large value and volume are our number one uh, reason, as well as just progress, seeing how the stand is growing. So in order to measure height, again, we use a, a protractor or a clinometer in this case uh, to get an accurate measurement of a couple of angles. What we're gonna be doing is walking back a distance from the tree so we can see both the bottom and the top and measuring those angles. Now, it's just a good practice when measuring tree height is to uh, walk away from the tree so the base is below you and the top's above you. And this does a couple of things. As that angle, as you look to the top of the tree or even the bottom gets really large, um, it starts to get difficult uh, with the uh, ratio of rise over run or percent slope. That number tends to get really large real quick once it goes over 100% or passes 45 degrees. So if we can keep our measurements below that, we get a lot better, uh, more accurate height re uh, reading, but uh, not a requirement, just a recommendation. So the way this works, pretty simple. Uh, we're creating two right triangles and we could use trig with the tangent function where we take the uh, tangent of one of the angles, let's say the top one, uh, we know the distance from the tree we are. So we can use the tangent and the trig uh, function, the tangent equals the opposite side, or the height in this case, over the ad ad adjacent, uh, the distance we are away from the tree, or the rise over the run. Now we don't like to use tangent because again, that's a uh, trig function, requires a, a math, uh, calculation almost every time unless you have a, a tangent table in your pocket which most people uh, tend to not have so what we use is a, a ratio of the uh, percent slope which is simply the rise over the run uh, and that gives us uh, that ratio or percentage and we can use that as a calculation because the rise the height over the run of each of those segments um, equals our percent slope so we can calculate percent slope we can calculate how far we are away from the tree. So our only unknown distance is the rise. And the way we get that to work is we just basically multiply our percent slope or the change in those angles. Uh, so if they're uh, uh, looking down and looking up, we add those basically together. Um, or in a way you could think of it, you subtract them. So you're taking a positive minus a negative uh, slope uh, becomes addition. So we're taking the total angle spread and multiplying it times the distance we're away from the tree. Now, if you know 100, it's a great number to use because the math is pretty straightforward. If I'm looking up at this tree, that will just say uh, 60%. I'm looking down at this tree from my, my perspective or my, dip, my location 100 feet away uh, at negative 10%, 60 minus a negative 10 is 70, 70% 70 0.7 times 100, 
would give the height of that tree 70 feet. So having that 150, 200 makes the math really easy. If I were to pull a tape measure or pace away from a tree and be like 115, 117, and I'm probably gonna have to pull out a pencil and, and do a little, little math or uh, pull out a calculator. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but we do this a lot in a day. So to make this as streamlined and quick as possible um, really helps out. So we're going to set that up right now. I'm going to head back 100 feet. We're going to look at the bottom and top of this tree. Try to get a look through a clinometer while we do it. Measure the height and then um, we'll be uh, ready to next video to go out and actually put in a small plot. Uh, and try to do that virtually. So let's head 100 feet away and take a look at the top of this tree. Uh, and take a couple of those readings. So what I do is I take my clinometer and I'm gonna try to show through uh, another camera how this works. But as I look through this, there's a dial. And I need to look down at the base of the tree down to the base of the tree. I, I'm not that far above it, so I'm only getting a negative five looking through here. Uh, and then looking up at the top of the tree, I'm going to the very top, and I'm getting just a little over 90. So just for the sake of the math, I'm going to call that 90. Um, so 90 minus a negative five, 95 percent. Is my angle spread. So 90 to the top. Oh, look at that. It's the exact example I used. I, that, I didn't plan that. Um, and then looking down to the bottom, uh, if we use this example right here that's, that's on there, um, we would get that uh, the tree is 95 feet tall. And I was a little bit, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you have to figure out how accurate you want. I was like about 7%, 6%. Then maybe 91. Um, so you can get down to down to about a foot in accuracy on your height if you're carefully taking your measurements. So 95 feet tall. Now I wanted to quickly show you in here what that looks like. I got a camera. I thought I would try this. Okay, so I've got this in the camera, and I wanted to show you what this looks like. Okay, so now you have a shot through um, the clinometer. You can see I'm on zero. If I look down, you'll notice on the right, there's a negative number. So I was looking at the bottom of that tree. It was negative five. You notice on the right side is the percent slope. On the left is the, uh, the smaller number, is the degrees. There's two scales. And then what I do is I look up at the tree and what did I say? I'm trying to remember my numbers. I, I went up there to about, what, 90% slope. And as you can see, as those numbers start to uh, go up, I'm getting close to 45. But those percent slope numbers really start packing together once you get over 100%, and then they really just take off. So a pretty simple device to use. But what I'd like to make a comment on, again, is the importance of making sure you're fur, fur, further away from the tree than you think you need to be. Um, and often, I'm trying to get back to my camera here, apologize. Being a further, furthest away that you can possible is great. And um, make sure that you can, again, see the top and bottom is the most critical. But ideally, if you're at that 100 foot mark, it's real easy to do the math. So, uh, height. Um, Looks pretty simple. After you do this a couple times, you'll realize that it's not a difficult task. But what we're eventually gonna be uh, coming out here and doing is putting in one of these plots, uh, probably not a 10th of an acre in this case, but we're gonna come out here to this stand uh, and do a 20th acre plot, measure some trees, uh, give you some data on a data sheet. So you can be able to go back, uh, unfortunately not being able to come to the field in these videos, but uh, create a uh, diameter distribution uh, as well as volume tables for uh, the trees out here in different parts of our forest. So uh, look forward to seeing you next time and um, thanks a lot.